Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Minister, can you confirm when the continuance of the Northern Ireland Planned Health Scheme, formerly the cross-border directive, will be placed into law within the state? This is of crucial importance, not just for the thousands of our citizens on waiting lists around the country, but also it's a serious recruitment and retention issue for our armed forces who rely on the scheme for treatment in Northern Ireland hospitals through PD4. Can you, Minister, confirm that the funding has been allocated to the long-term continuance of the scheme in addition to that of the cross-border directive, which forces patients to mainland Europe. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Collins, for, for raising this issue, which uh, I know is of particular interest to you, uh, and I acknowledge the work that you uh, and others have done in assisting constituents uh, and patients to uh, avail of the services of the cross-border directive. And while the, the policy matter is one for the Minister for Health, I'm happy to answer the question as best I can. As you know, since the start of this year, the provisions of the EU cross-border directive uh, no longer apply to the UK. On the 28th of December 2020, the Irish Government approved the implementation of a new Northern Ireland planned healthcare scheme. The new scheme, operational from 1 January 2021 enables persons resident in the state to access the same treatments previously provided for under the EU cross-border directive and to be reimbursed for such private health care in Northern Ireland by the HSE provided such health care is publicly available within Ireland. It's intended the scheme will operate for 12 months on an administrative basis initially with a view to developing a general scheme to provide a statutory basis for uh, the scheme and the Minister for Health is progressing plans in that regard. In relation to costs, it is a demand-led scheme and the cross-border directive costs have been increasing year and year and in 2020 were 15.4 million euro. I think the bigger picture here, Deputy, is we need to get away from a situation where people have to travel to Northern Ireland. That for me is the bottom line. We're investing 22 billion euro this year in our public health service. We should be able to uh, uh, provide the service to people for cataract treatments, for example. And in that regard, many of the, the constituents uh, that you are assisting to bring to Northern Ireland will be able to benefit from the additional investment which is now being provided in ophthalmology services. Uh, there is a reconfiguration underway in Cork, uh, as you know, will involve the existing services amalgamated from two sites at CUH uh, and the South Infirmary to now be based at the South Infirmary Victoria University uh, Hospital campus. It includes uh, a new outpatient build which is nearing completion and following completion of this services will transfer to the South Infirmary uh, in quarter four of this year. A new theatre complex is also being built in the South Infirmary which will create two new theatres. One additional theatre which is expected to be completed uh, in Thanks, quarter Minister. one or quarter two of next year. So we need to get away from a situation where people have to travel to Northern Ireland, provide the service locally and for your constituents uh, in Cork, we should be providing that service in Cork and that's what I'm determined to help achieve Deputy as Minister. Park. Yeah, um, thank you uh, very much. Oh, sorry, uh, Deputy Collins. Very no, you're right. Thank you very much, um, uh, Minister, for your reply. Um, next week, the bus 67 uh, heads to the north from um, from Bod Cork and Kerry. And, uh, Deputy Danny Healy Ray and myself have been organising those buses, and you've acknowledged that. And you're saying, Minister, you, we should get away from uh, having people to go to the north. And I fully, fully support you on that. But it's not just a cataract. It's the hips. It's the knees. It's the simple MRI. Imagine you can't get an MRI done without waiting for weeks in here. So we're nowhere near, Minister. Absolutely, we're light years away from resolving these issues here. And until that is the case, I'm just asking you, can you give more detail into the continuation of the Northern Ireland uh, scheme that is, that, that is there for this year? We were led to believe in, in West Cork, when I raised this issue strongly towards the end of last year, that this was resolved. The Senator, uh, Fine Gael Senator in West Cork was saying, it's resolved and stop scaremongering. It's resolved long term. There's no issue there. You're here to, to me telling me today that you're looking into it. Uh, can you give me more details on what you're looking into? Can you give me more details? Are you going to fund it? Is it going to continue? That's the question I'm asking, and I'd appreciate an answer to that question. Uh, sure, thanks uh, very much for your uh, reply, Deputy. Uh, on that question, uh, the Minister for Health uh, is developing the general scheme of legislation uh, to provide for the continuation of uh, a scheme that is tantamount or equivalent to the cross-border directive so that the services uh, can continue to be availed of. Uh, if I just want to finish the point on uh, the uh, cataracts, and I acknowledge it's not the only issue, but in addition 
to the enhanced facilities at the South Infirmary, a new medical of ophthalmology service funded by the South and South West Hospital Group is due to commence in August of this year, which will be based at St Mary's Health Camp Campus in Grona Braher. Service which will be provided following the recent appointment of two new additional medical ophthalmologist consultants and support staff will enable the streamlining of medical and surgical cases, providing improved patient access. It will be clinically uh, tasked with reviewing 3,000 patient referrals on current outpatient waiting lists. So that is a very important reform. And when I look at the breakdown uh, of what services people needed in Northern Ireland when they, when they travelled there, when it came to day cases, uh, specialties, ophthalmology uh, was by far and away the largest at over 1,300, uh, orthopaedics 125, general surgery 53. You're right to say when it comes to uh, outpatient specialties and surgery and so on, Thanks, orthopaedics, there's a very significant number there as well. And we need to fix that issue so that those services are provided here. Gabriel Collins. Thank you, uh, Minister. And any new services that we're getting in, in Cork is to be greatly welcomed, and I, I appreciate you uh, divulging that information with us. The problem here we have is we're, we're in the, um, we, we've had a pandemic. We have massive waiting lists uh, right throughout Cork County, right throughout Cork, and right throughout the country. It's not, it's not, so I get people calling me from Dublin, Waterford, Limerick, uh, everywhere uh, in Ireland looking for a hip. They're in pain. For, they need hip surgery. They need uh, carpal tunnel. It could be knee and obviously mainly uh, cataracts. And I know that you said that there's work being done on the long-term uh, development of the scheme that's there in present, at present. But I don't want to be in a situation that I was in here last year, being criticised by opposition people saying I was scaremongering, I was scaremongering, that there's a long-term scheme in place. We still don't have that long-term scheme. And you said it's been worked on. When do you think that there's funding going to become available to continue that long-term scheme? Will that be announced next week, or is it going to lead right up to December the 28th, like last year, and or lead our way into maybe the 1st of January next year before we get confirmation? That's not fair. For people who are suffering in pain, people who are going blind, they need to know today, is there somewhere to go that they can have this done within a period of maybe two months and not to have to wait? Some people are ringing me telling me they're waiting five years. Okay, Minister. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, thanks very much, Deputy. And look, I want to reassure you that funding uh, is not the constraint. The cost of the scheme in 2020 uh, was 15.4 million euro. And in the context of uh, a healthcare budget of 22 billion euro, uh, the funding is not the issue. Uh, the costs are demand led, so it depends how many people uh, avail of uh, the services under the cross border directive, or in the case of Northern Ireland, avail of the Northern Ireland planned healthcare scheme. It's important to reassure people that that scheme is in place. Uh, it continues. I acknowledge that in its current form it is temporary, uh, but it is the intention of the government uh, to put that on a firm footing so that people uh, in the Republic can continue uh, to access services in Northern Ireland uh, in a manner equivalent to the cross-border directive that we had uh, up to the end of last year. Uh, so the funding is in place. We have an existing scheme. Uh, it, the view is that a new scheme to be permanent should be underpinned by legislation. It should be a statutory scheme and it does fall to the Minister for Health to bring that forward uh, but I will raise the issue uh, with him again uh, Deputy Collins further to you raising the question this morning.